Good afternoon. I'm Steve Bastet, and along with Aaron Marsden, I would like to welcome everyone on behalf of Canasa and Security Canada to our weekly online learning session. I would like to say a special thank you to Axis Communications for their support and sponsoring today's session. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Near Risen and Obeyed Hafiz of Axis. Near is a field sales engineer for Axis Communication covering Central Canada. In this role, he provides pre-sales support through designing, testing, and consulting on solutions to fit the partners and end users' requirements and needs. Near is the subject matter expert for the Axis Body Worn Solution for Canada. Over the last 10 years, Obeyed has been assisting his enterprise customers in protecting and optimizing their assets. He began his career with an IT integrator before transitioning over to OT and physical security. Obeyed has been with Axis as a regional sales manager for Western Canada for the last three years and has a strong focus in the government and oil and gas sector. Feel free to type any questions you may have during the session into the chat window and they will respond during the Q&A portion roughly 20 minutes from now. I'll now turn the session over to Nir and Obeyed. Welcome gentlemen and thanks for being here. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Steve, and a special thank you to Canasa and to those of you joining us today. As Steve mentioned, my name's Obeyed. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for Western Canada for Axis, and I'm very excited to be finally introducing you to our Body Worn Solution. But before we talk about the solution itself, you may be wondering why Axis has chosen to get into the, uh, into the Body Worn market. And to better understand that, we have to go almost back to the mid-90s when we first came out with the network or IP camera. At that time, the existing technology was obviously the analog camera, and the market had a lot of gaps and needs, which that technology at the time wasn't fulfilling. So in a very similar manner, a lot of those same needs and gaps are reappearing for the body-worn uh, market. So the first one um, is the biggest one, which is the limited technology. So the existing technology in the market is very outdated and archaic. And uh, it's not only expensive, but it, it hides behind a lot of long-term contracts that locks up customers for many years to come. Uh, but probably the, the biggest offender is the fact that these systems are, are quite closed off and proprietary. So if the customer ever wanted to change solutions or go a different way, they really can't because it's very cumbersome to deploy and they're fairly locked in, taking away any of their flexibility. Now, we've been very hard at work over the last couple of years working on a, a new and unique solution. And we've been taking the feedback from our, from our existing customers, new customers, uh, and you know, our customers that are using are the competitors out there to create something truly innovative. Now, I won't touch on the, <clears throat> excuse me, I won't touch on the core components because Nir will be going over that in a little bit. Uh, but what I do wanna talk about is what makes us unique. And uh, what that is, is it all boils down to our open architecture. So our system will work and exist in your world, meaning it'll work with your VMS or video management software, or EMS, which is an evidence management software. So if you're using, say, a Genetech or a Milestone or even Access Camera Station, you already have the software that this can essentially live within. Now, this is obviously very, very huge for us, right? And the, and the customer at the end of the day, because they no longer need to invest in a brand new platform. They can use what they've already got and they, uh, they can just leverage and deploy uh, just, just like any other new camera. So this is again, new to the market. It's never been done before. 
Um, and it offers a, a lot of scalability and flexibility at the end user level. It's built to provide them with options in the future. If they want to go somewhere else, well, they absolutely can. Um, and again, Access being a IT company first, a networking company first, you still get the highest level of cybersecurity standards and end-to-end -end encryption. Again, Nir will be going over these points a little bit more in detail. Now, when we talk about body worn, I know the first thing that probably comes to mind is a police officer or someone in law enforcement. And that makes sense because they were one of the first to actually deploy the technology. But because of our open architecture now, us kind of you know, shaking things up, most of our existing customers that are already you know, using a VMS or a video management software, we've essentially removed a layer or a barrier of entry for them. And now they can finally take, uh, take a step into the body worn uh, world. So we've had tons of customers reach out to us, you know, in the education, banking, casino space. Uh, I'm based out of Alberta. So obviously oil and gas customers uh, here uh, have been reaching out to me to put even body worn on their remote workers. So we're getting a lot of new applications, that, you know, just beyond that law enforcement play. Now, if you, you know, if you didn't see your vertical up there, or if you're already part of one of those verticals, uh, but you're not sure if body, uh, body worn makes sense in your world, um, to better answer that question, I think you have to understand two things. One is, of course, the purpose of body worn, and the second is the benefits. Uh, on the purpose side, you know, it's, it's fairly simple. A, uh, a, a body worn is there to provide evidence and documentation in, in form of a video recording. But I think it gets much more interesting on the benefit side. One of the most important benefits and more, one of the more common ones is of course deterrence. The body worn usually discourages someone from acting with malicious intent or you know, uh, taking their actions too far in fear of being recorded, especially now. Um, so what we found are, and statistics have shown that body, uh, with the presence of body worn, critical situations are more likely to be de-escalated. So this not only reduces possible, you know, potential incidents and altercations, uh, but it all, also increases user safety. Speaking of users, on the other side of the exact same coin, users will generally take their responsibilities more seriously. So if you think about a package delivery company and you outfit every single employee with one of these body-worn cameras, they'll probably tend not to throw these packages right at the door, right? They'll, they'll usually be a bit, more, a bit more civil. But on the other side of this is you have transparency. Um, you know, because the footage shows an unbiased view of, of a critical event, say in the, in the same example, if, uh, if a customer, you know, um, for the same packaging co company, they say, hey, this package was damaged or it was mishandled, but the user has the footage that shows otherwise, you know, it can, it can certainly, uh, certainly help their case. Uh, one, thing to, one thing to definitely mention, though, is although users are at first very hesitant or, or maybe uh, apprehensive in, in, in trying out body-worn camera, cameras, what we found is uh, the footage is generally used to vindicate or corroborate their side of the story. This goes a long way in you know, reducing potential legal liabilities. Now, the most um, forgotten uh, uh, benefit on, of body-worn is definitely learning. So being able to use real life examples or footage from the field to reflect on existing training processes or, or procedures not only helps increase competency, but efficiencies and effectiveness as well. So you're essentially moving from textbook learning to evidence-based learning that you've gathered for your specific environment. And that can have a very, very major impact. Now, I know I've, I've talked quite a bit, but uh, I'll pass it over to Nir to talk about the, uh, the core components. All right, thank you very much. Uh, pleasure to be here, thank you for being here as well. So I'm gonna talk about the core components of the system. We're providing a full body-worn solution, not just the cameras. Let's take a look at the components that makes up the solution. So the core components of the system is the Axis W100, which is the camera itself, and the W800, which is the system controller. By using this unique approach, with the system controller, our system is very flexible, easy to integrate and very scalable. We'll go into detail into these components later in the presentation. For docking station, we have two variations. We have a one bay and an eight bay docking station that their purpose is to one, to charge a battery on the camera and also to offload the video footage from the camera into the system controller. We're gonna have uh, four different mounts available to use to mount the camera to the body of the wearer. We're gonna have the clip mount, the molly mount, 
rig, the magnet mount and the harness mount, all of them are using a system called ClickFast. ClickFast is a system being utilized globally. And if one of those options are not suitable for you, you can uh, go through a third party and uh, get a different type of mount that is going to using the same ClickFast system. And lastly, we have the Axis TW1200. It's a body-worn mini bullet sensor that's going to be attached to a USB-C connector at the bottom of the camera. Uh, it's another way of ability to adjust the location of the lens. This will take over the lens on the camera itself. And you have the ability to change the point of view, add it as a different component to maybe on a tactical helmet or maybe to put it on a different location on the body. Let's talk about what makes our offering different to everything else in the market. That is the fact that we provide an open and flexible platform. One of Axis' core value is to be always open. And we have followed that design philosophy from the beginning of the product design. Currently, we have integration with Genetech Clearance, which is their evidence management software, Genetech Security Center, Milestone X Protect, and our very own Axis Camera Station. Because of our open API, any software company can get access to it and integrate it to their own platform. What this means is that you can potentially integrate your solution, or our solution, sorry, with your existing VMS or EMS. We don't try to lock you into using our storage or our own software systems. You can choose the best of breed, uh, that is best flexible and scalable for you. So let's look about how system, uh, simple system overview. The Axis W100 is the camera recorded, recording footage out there in the field. When the person finishes its shift, taking the camera, put it back into its docking station. The docking station start to charge the battery and offload the video from the camera. When it's going, it's offloading to the Axis W800, the system controller. And the system controller then send that footage into the content destination. A content destination is a general term for your where you're going to send the video to be stored at. Is it going to be a VMS or EMS? The system is not limited to one system controller. In fact, the solution is designed for scalability and to handle potentially thousands of cameras. Each controller can handle up to 40 cameras over five with using of five eight bay docking stations. On the system controller, you have a small software integrated web interface called Body Warm Manager that will allow you to administer and configure your entire solution. And again, I'm going to talk about it in a specific slide as well. You can connect and control multiple system controller and have a single point of uh, administration. This way, you don't have to actually log into each and individual system controller. Makes it much more easy to administer and scalability much more easier. So let's talk about the specification of the components. So for the camera itself, it has the ability to record at 720p and 1080p at 30 frames per second. It has WDR built in. It has 140 degree field of view. It's mil standard and uh, approved and IP67 rated. It has a 64 gig SD card that is not removable. It's actually resides inside the camera. It has a 12 hours of battery life. That is 12 hours of recording at const constantly at 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second. And that's, um, that's a number we got after a 500 charging cycle that we did testing on. It has dual microphone for better audio quality and noise suppression. It weighs less than six ounces, So probably less than your iPhones or mobile device. And it comes with a three year warranty. That's including the camera and the battery. And it's also part of the end to end encryption as part of the cybersecurity. Some additional hardware that currently present inside the camera. Currently active, we have a GPS antenna that runs on the camera. So this way, once you trigger the recording, you will get information about the GPS coordinates when you start recording. It also have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and accelerometer that currently is not active, but it's gonna be active shortly with an other uh, firmware release. So there's no need for additional hardware uh, to be purchased. 
The system controller, it's a single integration point and management for the entire solution. It's the brain of the system. From that point on, you can control how the camera will operate and do, do its work. It has a synchronous offloading at gigabit speed. That means that it's not gonna offload all the camera uh, footage at once into your VMS. It will do a staggered offloading. This way it will actually protect your network and your bandwidth and not create a choke point on your network. It's part of the open ecosystem and that's because of that. It gives you ability to do an easy integration to your VMS and it supports a large on-premise installation as we've seen in the previous slide. The Body One Manager, as I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, it's built in into the system controller and it manages all the aspects of users and the hardware. So for example, it can administer the Body Worn system in general. It can create user group profiles. That means you can specify how the camera is gonna behave once it's out there in the field. Will it record at 1080p or 720p? Do you want to record audio? Do you want to uh, create a pre-buffer that's gonna be at 30 seconds or 60 seconds or 90 seconds? Just an example, the pre-buffer, if you have it 90 seconds, means once you press the button to start the recording, it will also save a 90 seconds of footage from before you start the recording itself. And most importantly, this is where you specify and you upload the information for your content destination. That means that you tell the system where to send the video footage from the camera into your VMS or EMS. And it's very simple to use because it's a matter of uploading the single file that you download from your platform and into your Body Worn Manager. So we talked about quality and I mentioned it's IP67 rated and mill standard, but what does that mean? So IP67, it means that you can actually have it in a harsh environment. If it's a wet environment, you can actually dunk it in water to up to three feet of depth, depth for about 30 minutes. It's not something I would recommend to do, but definitely be able to stand if it falls down and you pick it up, put it back on you and you re it's ready to go. For mill standard, you can see all the different types of uh, tests that is going through, just to make sure that once it's out there in the field, it's ready to go and ready to take whatever elements is gonna be thrown at it. So we all aware that cybersecurity is a big and hot topic in any IoT device that's out there in, in the field. And we definitely didn't, uh, didn't put, didn't forgot about the body one solution. So when it comes to security in our solution, on all of our mediums that holds the video footage, so we have some recording footage on the camera and also some storage on the system controller, all the video is encrypted by AES-256 encryption, which is a high level of encryption that is even approved by government facilities. All the information being transferred over the medium from the docking station to the system controller and from the system controller to your VMS or EMS is encrypted as well using HTTPS, using TLS. And on top of that, we also incorporated our TPM module inside the system controller. The TPM module just gives you another layer of storing the encryption keys in a more secure way onto the system controller. And by that, I'm gonna send it back to Obey for the final remarks. Perfect, thank you so much, Nir. Um, now, I'd like to show you some footage, but uh, before I do that, I think it's important to understand the difference between uh, the footage from a body-worn camera and a surveillance camera. So here on the left side is obviously the body-worn, and on the right side, you have our, our P32, you know, our, one of our most popular dome cameras. Um, on the right side, you know, this daytime footage, um, on the right side, you obviously have significantly more details, a sharper image, and that's because of all the lighting technologies that are in this dome camera, such as a light finder and WD, uh, WDR, uh, sorry, forensic WDR. Uh, now, we could have easily put that technology into the body-worn camera, but we left that out on purpose, and that's completely by design, because the purpose of a, a body-worn camera is to provide an unbiased 
view uh, of the of the incident or of the situation. So you have to get the footage as close as possible to what the human eye could see, so that again it's admissible in court and and uh, and as close to what to what the human eye sees. Now with that, uh, we'll take a look at some footage that Nears gathered for us over the next or over the last few weeks. So on the left side, we have some folks that have been redacted out of the footage. Um, you can do that through Access Camera Station, Nostone, Genetech, it's a fairly common uh, tool, especially for incident and the case management. Redaction is, is quite important, uh, especially if you're, uh, if you're handing off the video footage to the authorities or somebody else. Here's near getting pulled over by someone. It happens all the time. How are you doing today, sir? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. Uh, do you know why I'm pulling you over? No. Unfortunately, you're doing an 80 in a 50 zone, sir. I was, I'm sure I did 55. No, that's not the case. Uh, can I please see your driver's license and registration, please? Sure. Thank you. Uh, the sorry, other sorry. thing to notice here is the high level of WDR the that's Thank still you. within the camera. Sorry, you can still see sorry. people outside of, these, uh, outside of these windows, even on a very sunny day. Here's some nighttime footage with the presence of a flashlight Excuse to me, show uh, yes. light I compensation. You the can still get sure. a clear shot of somebody's face. And then the same traffic stop at night, you know, still clear, uh, clear sight of the license plate and uh, near space here and uh, with, with the sure. presence of a flashlight. Can I see your license and registration, please? Sure. Now, the reason why, you know, we showed it to you in this format is although we couldn't put all those, um, all those lighting technologies onto, onto, onto the body-worn camera because we want it to be admissible in court, it's still one of the best microphones on the market. Uh, so you get the, uh, the, uh, the best audio quality and it's one of the best imagers in the market. So I'm sure you guys have seen all these YouTube videos of different, uh, different body-worn footage. It does not look like this. So you're still getting a very, very good looking product. Um, I know we haven't talked about cost yet, uh, and you can certainly get you know pricing from uh, your local distributor or your uh, or one of our one of our valued resellers. Um, but I think it's more important to understand the total cost of ownership instead. So as Nir mentioned, each one of our system controllers can handle up to 40 cameras. So the more cameras you bring online to that maximum of 40, the cheaper the per user cost becomes. For a typical uh, 40 camera system, uh, when, you, when you take into account the, the cameras themselves, the controllers uh, and, the, and the mounting hardware, you're looking at roughly 750 bucks MSRP. So that already makes us extremely competitive in the market. But to further build on this, you're able to pool and share uh, the, uh, the cameras among a group of employees or users to further build on that ROI. Now, I know we touched on training very quickly, but if you're already reusing a, a VMS like Genetech or Milestone or Access Camera Station, your team is already trained on the software part. You no longer have to go through that process again. Um, sometimes you have to store footage for a very, very long time. And if you're familiar with access and our compression technologies like Zipstream, you can apply that on the, on the body-worn camera as well to further reduce the amount of storage uh, that you need to, to actually store these, uh, store these files. Uh, I've already mentioned this, but it's a, it's, a, it's a very important one. We don't have any SLAs. There's no SMAs, no upgrade fees. There's no contracts. You know, you buy the hardware and that's yours. You can put it on any VMS you want, but from our side, there's, there's nothing else. And Nir talked about this really quickly, but you know, it's very common in the market uh, that our competitors are offering one year warranty and you can certainly buy an additional two years, but we're offering three years right out of the box because we really do stand behind our product. And because of that mil spec rating, we think it's, it's really built to last in a very rugged environment. And taking all that into account, you know, um, especially that 750 per user and all those different, uh, different aspects, we have a very, very competitive, um, competitive product in the market. So as a, as a quick wrap up, we've got, you know, tons of different advantages of going with our solution. Definitely the three-year warranty, best in class cybersecurity. Uh, but the one I really want to drive home is the, uh, is the fact that it's completely built uh, on an open architecture, right? It's built uh, as an open platform to be, uh, to be used within your existing systems so that you're not, you're not, uh, you're not pigeonholed into using a certain system that, that's tied up into, into long-term contracts. So if you have an opportunity or you're very interested in, in you know, testing out body-worn cameras, what I would suggest is reach out to a local RSM or, or an or a access rep and we can help you get started with some demos or some pilots. Uh, you can also just reach out to us and we can navigate that for you. Or if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, with that, hopefully this was helpful. We're certainly very excited to be bringing body-worn into the market. 
Um, I'd like to sincerely thank you for your time and attention. And with that, I'll send it back to you, Steve. Great, thank you, guys. Excellent presentation and uh, glad to see that Nier was not arrested and was able to be with us. <laughs> um, I'm gonna to apologize to the audience. We are running a little late. Uh, we are actually doing this again in French in just a few minutes. Uh, so we're, we've only got time for a quick question. Uh, any other questions, the gentleman here will be able to get back to you uh, via email this afternoon, so we won't forget you. Uh, our question real quick, when licensing for a BMS, it is, a, it is based on the number of system controllers or based on the number of body-worn cameras? It's based on the number of uh, body-worn cameras. Excellent, thank you. Uh, how long will the battery last on the 720p recording? Nir, did you wanna take that one? Yeah, so the battery lasts when you're looking at 720p, you're looking at around 17 hours approximately for op uh, operation time. Great, thanks. And we can cram one more in here. Uh, can I take the SD card from the body-worn camera? Um, no, you cannot. But the, cam the SD card is inside the body-worn camera. Once you remove it, you will uh, avoid the warranty. And there's a whole purpose for it, obviously. It doesn't need to be going to anyone's hand. Plus it's encrypted, so nobody can do anything with it. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so again, uh, apologies, we can't get to more questions, uh, but I will get those over to our presenters and they will get back to you this afternoon. So that brings us to the end of today's session. Thanks for joining us. And once again, thank you to Near and Obeyed and Access Communications for their support. At the close of this session, a link to register for next week's session will pop up. Please be sure to register. We look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, be well.